it had a bad contact point there, but now it's okay now. So about 8.2, once I've conditioned it. So 8.2. So what I'm going to try and do next, I'm going to try and pulse it with a Bedini because I know that, well, a Bedini switch to, I'm going to use it to charge a capacitor because it can charge capacitor real fast. And then when you short it out, it regages, you know. So by pulsing it, it's more efficient. So I'm going to try and extract current that way and use the inductive kickback of the Bedini coil and resonance and use that to try and charge larger devices. So we'll see how that goes. Now that the cell is conditioned, it puts out a few milliamps at around 8 volts and it charges this capacitor here because it charges capacitors real quick. And I've got the uh, switch here with a transistor pulsing this capacitor at 750 hertz at 2% into this big coil here and the inductive kickbacks here. We're getting about 24 volts of inductive kickbacks. So we could use this to charge super caps or whatever, even a 12 volt battery if I really wanted to. Now for convenience, I'm just using the digital switch to show you real quick the effect. But this only takes about 40 milliamps. If you don't want to use it, you could, you could always use an SCR system that would automatically trigger once the capacitor reaches maybe uh, 4 or 5 volts and then it'll pulse into the coil. So you could have a fully automatic system and collect the inductive kickback and continuously charge, you know, a 12 volt battery with this cell if you really wanted to. So without any digital switching. But I'm just showing you real quick just so it can trigger the scope here. So um, I hope you enjoy. Some people wanted to have an update with the cell. And when you pulse these, you get a lot more output because what happens is when you short them, they they like re-engage for a burst as soon as you let it go. So the continuous displacement through the discharging of the capacitor forces the cell to re-gauge all the time and provide that burst. What happens is when you sh if you go more than you try and load it more than what it can handle, it basically goes warm. Nothing wants to happen. It won't even run anything. But as long as you can keep it charging, you know, free for a moment in the cycle, so you you give it time to charge that capacitor, it'll that gives you a little bit of a um, amps a second discharge to trigger the coil, which this can't do on its own. But again, an SCR on this capacitor or any can automate this setup without the uh, switch. So this is very uh, interesting. You want a pulse, resonant, um, inductive kickback. And optionally, you could always send it back to the front. I don't know what the... Um, if you want to trigger the piezoelectric, because it does kick back. So that could e even enhance it some more. I'm not even doing that right now. But uh, we could maybe send the spikes back through isolation. I'd like to show about sending it back since I have no mechanism here I can only do it manually so I got the uh, back EMF going back into it touching it just for a moment to pulse it because it can't keep it shorted but look what happens when I touch it for a moment to the kickbacks I'm just going to touch it look how that if I had a mechanism to keep triggering it just by touching it like that all of a sudden it goes up to over 100 and all I'm doing is um, tapping it like this. So just to, just to pulse once in a while back into it, really. See that? It's getting way over 50 volts. So now I'm not touching it no more. So it's going to settle back down there to a 24. But this is pretty interesting. So yeah, major uh, feedback effect if you loop the pulse back into the cell, as I noted with other experiments.